your invaluable uh, support and partnership. And thank you, John Feinblatt, for being here and uh, for your and, uh, and Mayor Bloomberg's support. We've always been inspired by your commitment to preventing gun violence, and it's our privilege to be a partner with you in those efforts. I also want to thank our spectacular team at PAX, led by Jenny Lentz, our Managing Director of Programs. As you might imagine, this is a very special day for PAX. We've launched successful programs in many cities and states across the country, but this one is a little extra meaningful. Mm. New York City is PAX's hometown, mm. and it's my hometown. It's where my brother was shot, the reason I've devoted my life to preventing gun violence, and it's where I'm raising my kids and where my family lives. But more importantly than any of those personal reasons, New York City is a place where I know Speak Up will make a big difference. We realize, thanks in large part to many of the people here today, there is a tremendous commitment to safety in New York City schools, one that extends across agencies and outside the boundaries of school build buildings. Speak Up will help make New York City's students safer than ever. It will help to make the greatest city in the world even better, and nothing could make me and all of us at PAX any prouder. So we look forward to working with all of our partners to make this program successful, first in our 10 pilot schools and then citywide. To give every student in this great city the opportunity to say enough is enough to violence, to make their schools, their streets, and their futures as safe and as violence free as every student deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me next call on uh, John Feinblatt, our criminal justice coordinator. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker Quinn, and certainly, Daniel, thank you very much. Uh, a little more than four years ago, Mayor Bloomberg made a commitment to tackle the problem of illegal guns head on, and that's exactly what we've been doing. Making progress on this issue means attacking the problem at every level, whether it be enforcement or groundbreaking legislation that we've passed with the council, litigation against illegal gun dealers, or co coalition building like the more than 500 mayors that make up mayors against illegal guns. Our efforts have delivered real results, but we're not going to stop because the fight against guns is certainly not for the faint of heart. And this new PACS program in New York City is just another key ingredient in our fight against guns. Kids in the classroom, if you've heard, will have a new way to know directly, safely, and anonymously if they have information about potential threats or unsettling behavior wherever it, is, it occurs, whether it be in the schoolroom, the classroom, or the community. And the data shows that reaching out to young people, and to teenagers in particular, is a critical group for us to reach out to in our fight against guns, because nearly a third of those who are arrested for carrying a gun are young people 19 years or younger. And the top three ages for people arrested for possessing a gun are people who are 17, 18, and 19. So it's absolutely clear that outreach to this age group will help us build on the tremendous progress we've made both in the fight against illegal guns and in the fight to keep our schools safe. As you've heard, we've made tremendous progress in keeping our schools safe with a ma drops in major crime over uh, the course of the last nine years. And we know that good intelligence is the bedrock of good law enforcement. We take student safety seriously and we'll take their tips seriously. Uh, what we're announcing here today is good for students, it's good for all New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. As I mentioned uh, when I uh, spoke in the beginning, our efforts that have led us to uh, standing here with Pax and Dan today and this hotline really grow out of work that uh, I was doing with Robert Jackson and Inez Dickens and Melissa Mark Viverito and others with Harlem Mother Save and really grows out of uh, calls from Harlem Mother Save. Uh, they asked that as the speaker, I do everything in my power with my colleagues to make sure that their group eventually goes out of business and that they don't have more women and families joining it. So I want to thank Jackie uh, Roe Adams and call on her and Reverend Sullivan to speak, but I really want to thank Jackie. She lost two of her sons to gun violence. And uh, many people would have understandably just given up after that. 
Jackie has done anything but that. She is one of the strongest, most effective, hardest fighting New Yorkers I have ever seen, and also one of the most sensitive and supportive people I have ever seen, because I've had the misfortune of seeing you console mothers who have lost their children, and you are really one of New York City's unsung heroes. So I want to thank, thank you, Jackie, for everything you do. Thank you for pushing us to get us to this point today. We will keep going and do more, and I want to call on you and the chair of your board, Reverend Sullivan, to speak. Ms. Cruz, I want to thank you so much for being here as well. And Jackie, if you want to recognize the other women from the group who are here, too. I'm just going to introduce um, my chairperson, my pastor and chairperson of Harlem Mother Say, but I just want to first say thank you to the speaker, Councilwoman Dickens. I mean, they led the charge with us in Harlem, and I mean, we couldn't ask for better persons to be up there in Harlem and recognize um, Harlem Mothers, uh, Dorothy and Ella B. Um, for being so supportive all the time and their mothers who've lost kids to gun violence and I'm going to, I'm Dan you're on the money thank you um, I'm turning over to uh, chairperson Sullivan good morning on behalf of Harlem Mother Save uh, we would like to commend uh, Dan Gross and Pax um, and Speaker Quinn for making this initiative happen here in New York City um, Harlem Mother Save was founded in 2006, and as Speaker Quinn mentioned, it was not under the greatest of circumstances. But rather than looking at what was going wrong, Harlem Mother Saves became an example of what happens right when, when there's a need in the community and the citizens of that community step forward and allow their tragedies to become their strength. And so all of the mothers, we commend you and the Million Mom March for all that you do, always showing up. And you know they've lost children, they refuse to let any other parents lose their children. Um, the hotline that's been established is certainly in line with what we're trying to do with Harlem Mother Say is get into the schools and trying to empower the young people. Council Speaker Quinn mentioned that. It's about empowerment, giving voice to the voiceless and giving power to the powerless. Most of these young people that do carry guns carry them because they're afraid not to. And if they felt safe, they would leave them alone. So initiatives like this to know that they can report what's going on, they can stop incidents before they begin, are the kinds of things that are going to allow our young people to feel safe, allow them to focus on their studies, to allow them to grow and develop into the wonderful leaders of tomorrow. We know that the New York City public school system is capable of turning, putting out. So we want to thank all of the persons who are here lending your support, the, the DOE, uh, certainly Commissioner Kelly, and all that the NYPD is doing to help our communities to get safe, uh, the council members who are here that put their efforts toward putting together legislation that's going to make our streets safe. Um, but especially, again, what, what Mr. Gross is doing, I, I can't say thank you enough, mm -hmm. um, to go through the tragedy of losing a family member and to walk away from what most people yearn for, mm -hmm. a high-paying, powerful job in New York City, mm -hmm. to say, you know what, saving the lives of other young people is more important than any individual and financial achievement. So I commend you, and I admire what you're doing, and anything Harlem Mothers can do, whether it's in New York City or not, we can travel. <laughs> we uh, look forward to standing beside you in taking this initiative as far as we can go to help get rid of the idea of stop snitching and get people to focus on the idea of saving a life. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. We have a couple more speakers. I know it's been long and hot in here, but there's a lot of support for this initiative, so that's a good thing. Let me next call on the co-chair of our Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, Robert Jackson. And chair of our education committee, too. I forgot one of his. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker Quinn. Let me just thank all of you for participating. And Dan, you've turned your family's tragedy into a program to save lives. And so we're forever endeared with you. And Commissioner, uh, I don't need to tell you how much you're important to this, because even though I'm involved in education, I say the most important thing is the safety and security of the people that we represent. I think that this says it all right here. It says it all, speak up and save lives. Habla Sava Vidas. And it says here on this little pocket folder, don't assume it's a joke. Mm -hmm. Don't try to handle it yourself. Tell a teacher or a trusted adult. Or call 